Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Play Arts Kai variant Darth Vader. If you're not familiar with Darth Vader, then you probably shouldn't be watching this video. You don't have to be a Star Wars fan, but you should know who he is. And this is an awesome, awesome interpretation of the character. Now, I'm not biased towards Star Wars in any way. In fact, I think that Star Wars is kind of just average. I'm not the hugest Star Wars fan. It's pretty good. Uh, I, I think it's kind of more recognizable for what it is because of when it came out rather than being a particularly awesome franchise. So I'm not biased toward the license in any way. But I think this figure is really freaking cool. So if you are a Star Wars fan, then you're going to have one of two reactions, I think. You're either going to agree with me and probably go beyond and say it's even cooler. So this would be a great figure for you. Or you're going to say, hey, they changed a classic and I don't like it at all. In which case, why are you watching a re review for a variant figure? It doesn't really make sense. If you're into the whole variant thing, this figure does not disappoint. Let's get into it so I stop rambling. He comes with the standard player Takai display stage, and let's see how tall he is. 27 centimeters to the top of his dome, which puts him at about 10 and a half inches. He's standing mostly straight up and down right now. So, 10 and a half inches. And let me just say, he looks great, other than the style choices and things like that just because of the paint, because you guys know if you watch my custom videos, I love variation in finish. This guy has metallic silvers, the reds and blues that pop out on his chest, then he also has some dull grays, some purplish colors, some satin black, some metallic black, some glossy black, basically everything you could want. There's shading throughout, it looks so nice, the composition is so good, and my favorite part, yeah the helmet's cool, it's not super glossy, but it's glossy enough, and they got those kind of brownish red eyes, right, it looks cool. The cape. If you don't like the spikiness because it's kind of resembles, kind of resembles Batman, you know, that's, I guess that's a valid argument, but it fits the design, but here's the thing I like. They sculpted it with this super fine texture, let's see how close I can get so you can see that. It's really, really well sculpted with that texture. It has to be digital sculpting, I'm assuming. Uh, but with that kind of a gloss overcoat, now it's not super glossy like the shoulder pads or, or the helmet, for instance. Those are, well, they're not super glossy, but they're smooth is what I'm getting at. This has just enough gloss to make it glisten, and it glistens in the coolest way glistening can glisten. Looks so nice. Maybe it's not coming across well on camera just because of the way the lighting is. In person, this thing looks so cool. And I know I'm kind of gushing on this figure, but I really appreciate the thought and the planning and the execution that went into this. This cape looks awesome. Okay, let's get into... let's do accessories first on this guy. So we have two fist hands. You can see those. Those are what come on him in the package. He also has two kind of style pose hands, if you want to call them that, with just kind of like the loose grip. And you can see the variation in the paint again there. Nice sculpt work for the little armor bits, a little shading in the finger bits. Looks nice. We have two gripping hands. Same paintwork and everything overall. Gripping hands are, of course, for the lightsaber. We have another open hand, which is even more open for a style pose. We have a hand that comes with this cool force effect, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I know he didn't do this in the movies. He didn't have red plasma-like force stuff coming out of his hands, but it looks cool, and that's why they did it, so I'm okay with it. It's translucent. It has some shiny silvery pearl paint, some shading in the reddish color. Looks really nice. It would be cool if they made one that was kind of interchangeable between, not that hand, another hand for the other side, but, you know, no big deal that they only made, like, a secondary loose hand for it. So that's okay by me. I like it. It looks nice. We have our standard lightsaber. Only problem I have with this, the handle itself looks pretty good. Looks nice. The beam itself, or the saber, it's not translucent. It's basically just painted red and then shaded from white to pink, which looks okay. Hopefully you can kind of see that, and you'll probably see it better in the photos without this harsh light. I do wish it was a little bit more translucent. But it does also give the effect of being super intensely bright also, so it's okay. I do wish it was translucent though. But speaking of translucent lightsabers, this one, the swooshy one, is translucent. So we have the mostly painted opaque 
front part with the pink to white shading. Then you can see kind of like the trailing effect going off, but the entire thing is made out of this translucent plastic with the sculpted swooshiness. And it looks really, really cool. Only problem I have with this is that for some reason they made it fixed into this hand. So you can't put it on either side. He can only swing the swoosh with the right hand, which, you know, it's not a big deal. But it's a little curious why they sculpted it into the hand or made it permanent. But still, very, very cool piece. I can't wait to pose him with this, make it look like he's doing a swooshy slash. That's what it's called, by the way. Very cool piece. All right, so that's it for the accessories. Not a huge amount, but definitely enough for Mr. Vader here. So let's look at the articulation, which I'm mostly happy with. So the helmet, obviously the, the design of it allows for them to not have gaps as much in the joints, but you still run into some issues with the dome hitting the collar. Luckily, other than leaning the head from side to side, which you can do pretty well, you can lean it back a little bit and lean it forward all the way, so that's nice. But you can also rotate it all the way around, and it looks good every which way. So they did a pretty good job of creating that range of motion without having the dome get in the way too much. And part of that is because the head is on a double ball peg, so ball peg going into the head and into the neck. Then the neck itself is also on a double ball peg, so that moves around. So you can pretty much rotate it however you need to to get him looking where he needs to look. Shouldn't really have too much trouble with a little bit of finagling, no problem. And this material isn't super stiff, so you don't have to really worry too much about scratching or rubbing. For the shoulders, now here we do have a few issues in that it's a little bit limited. It looks awesome in that it's nice and flush and everything's really close and looks like it's all one continuous thing because this is meant to look like it's all connected, I'm guessing. Uh, but it does limit a little bit. You can't bring the arms too far up just because it gets in the way. Now again, it's not a huge deal. He's not supposed to be Spider-Man, so I don't think it's really a problem. And even like that, you still get a really nice look out of it. He does have that shoulder joint that I'm not super fond of. Instead of the classic butterfly, he's got that ball hinge, so you do kind of have an ugly armpit there. You do get decent range of motion out of it, though you can bring the arm pretty far forward. And of course it rotates all the way around this way. We can bring the arm up, you already saw that. We have a bicep swivel and a shoulder swivel. So the peg for the joint goes into the shoulder and it rotates around that, but we also get a bicep swivel underneath the shoulder, so I'm okay with that. While we're here, I'd like to point out, some people complain, oh, he looks like he has muscles and he's not supposed to have muscles. It really doesn't look like that to me. It just mostly looks like padding. Plus, if he's got robot arms and legs, spoiler alert, if you didn't already watch the movie, he can have robotic arms that look like human arms with muscles. Who cares? I think it's fine. And maybe, again, that's because I'm not a super Star Wars fan, but I don't know. I think it works just fine, so I am not complaining about that. Be careful, sometimes these guys get tucked in under this. Uh, otherwise, it works pretty good. Uh, bicep swivel, that's fine. The elbow hides itself when the arms are straight, and even mostly when the arms are forward, so that's a really nice design. We get eh, about 90 degrees, a little bit more. Not super great range of motion, but definitely good enough. Standard wrist hinges, ball hinges, so it'll swivel in the forearm and in the hand. You get the hinge there. For the torso, it's a little bit of a bigger gap than I would prefer. You can kind of get in there a little bit and see what's going on. But we do get a decent range of motion out of it. You can really get this guy bent over. Not super far forward, mostly to the side. But that'll probably make for some nice poses. And he does lean back pretty far, but then, of course, you have a bigger gap there. So with a little finagling, you can kind of reduce the gap and get him to look all right. So it's not a huge deal. I do wish it was a little cleaner, but eh, what are you going to do? The uh, skirty piece, whatever you want to call that, and these armor pieces, and the belt, all one piece. That's a little cumbersome. I wish they had separated that or made it a softer plastic. It would have been easier to pose him like that, I think, especially if they weren't connected in the middle back there. This limits him quite a bit. It's okay, though. Um, it's not great. Again, I would have preferred something a little bit more usable, but at least it looks really good. So that does move though, it's a floating piece, and you can see when you lift it all the way up, how the abdomen works. They didn't hollow it out too much, so the ball peg that goes into the lower abdomen here, which allows for all of this motion, it's not the greatest range of motion, but it's certainly, as you can see, pretty good. It's a little bit lower than on most of the other figures, but this hides it, and once this is down, you do lose some of that. 
The crotch piece is a floaty crotch, so it won't get in the way of the articulation too much. This one will. We have the ratchets going out to the side, which they're not limited at all. It's just the skirt that limits them. They go all the way forward also. No problem at all. And you can work around the skirt like that. You can give them the uh, Spartan kick. And the skirt thing doesn't get in the way too much, so that's fine. And then of course we have our thigh swivel built in, so that's all good. Loads of detail in there. The knees, mine were a little stiff when I first started posing it. But I don't know, I think they work pretty well. They don't have super big gaps. Could be a little less gappy, but definitely better than some other figures that we've seen. So I'm really okay with it. It's a nice range of motion and it looks pretty good. As you can see, that's even kind of a cool pose right there. If you wanted him to be like doing a jumpy swoosh slash, you could do that. And it, you know, it's just a really nice looking figure, aesthetically pleasing. And then lastly for the ankle, we get really good range of motion. These are soft pieces, ball hinge for the ankle forward and back. Uh, we can rotate that around for an ankle rocker, but it also, the way they pegged it in at an angle, it gives them an ankle rocker automatically. And they gave us that foot swivel, which I'm not particularly fond of, especially in addition to an ankle rocker, we don't really need it. I would have preferred to have a toe hinge, but we don't have a toe hinge. So if you like that, it's good. If you don't like that, it's not so good, but it still looks good, so I'm okay with that. So I will stop rambling. I definitely recommend this figure 100% if you haven't already. Pre-order it at Big Bad Toy Store. There's a link in the description below. I need to talk about the cape before we go, so let's do that. This piece is fairly stiff. Not super stiff, but it's not super soft. Good thing, though, because the cape comes down kind of low on the back, so our hinging and everything can still work just fine, even with that piece. I do wish there was a little more material in the cape so that when you spread it out, it doesn't have a gap in it. You can kind of see the gap here. Not a huge problem because of the skirt, it hides it. Uh, these guys though, like I said, I really like the cape. The sculpt is good, the paintwork, there is shading on it, and then the hinges allow you to move it however you want to. I do wish it had a little extra, but if you want to make it narrow, you can certainly do that. I love this figure, I love it. So you guys should probably like it at least, and I think you should probably pre-order it like I said. So there it is guys, stick around for the photos at the end and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see my upcoming figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.